Amen. Thank you, Phyllis. We appreciate that lovely music. Good morning. My name is Kevin Drain. I'll be your uh, pastor this morning. I am uh, glad to see you here at First United Methodist Church in the balcony, in the main floor. Man, I don't know about you, but if this keeps up, I'm going to get to feeling, oh, normal. <laughs> and that might be good. I don't know. It might not. But you know what? It's good to see y'all. And welcome those who might be catching us on Comcast or on Facebook or on our YouTube channel as well. So I want to begin with just a few announcements because lots of stuff is beginning to happen. Um, and I just remembered I forgot another one. Um, but I haven't started, so how did I forget it, right? Welcome to my mind. The Awakening Service has started again at 1130s on uh, Sunday. And so if you have friends or family who have uh, enjoyed the Awakening in the past, let them know that it has uh, started up again. Adult Sunday School will be here in the sanctuary immediately following the uh, first service. Well, at 1030, it will start. And today is uh, going to start Children's Sunday School again as well. I think Alan and Katie are going to be here and be available to, uh, to start a Children's Sunday School class as well. Uh, Potter's Men Group will begin meeting again on May 14th and... Um, 6 p.m. in the Jonah Room, where they have normally met. They intend to be meeting the second and fourth Sundays of each, or excuse me, Thursdays of each month. Don just panicked. No, no, not Sunday. The second and fourth Thursdays of each month. Um, we have a book study that is starting this coming Wednesday. So there is no session today. If you had signed up for the Sunday session, the first Sunday session will be a week from today. But Wednesday at 9.30 here in the sanctuary, we will uh, begin our Not a Fan study. And you're welcome to attend the Wednesday 9.30 or the Sunday 3.30. It's the same thing, so you don't have to attend both. Pick one each week. Um, also considering maybe starting an evening through the week, uh, an evening session, because Sunday's not the best day. I've had lots of folks tell me that, you know what, it's kind of my day off. Um, and then if you have a job, Wednesday at 930 makes it tough too. So perhaps let me know or call the office and talk to Donna or Linda and let us know if you would be interested in an evening session for Not a Fan as well. It is an outstanding book. And the DVD series that goes along with it is, uh, well, you will be moved. You will be moved. I will be moved. This will be the third or fourth time we've facilitated it, and it wails on me every time. Um, the only other thing is, I believe it is May 6th, and I don't have my phone, is May 6th National Day of Prayer? I think so, too. And so we're going to have a prayer breakfast. If you would like to uh, attend, 7 a.m., we'll start the breakfast downstairs. And you're saying, but Kevin, what about COVID? And it's like, you know what? We're trying to move back toward normal. So uh, 7 a.m. will be breakfast, and uh, approximately 7.25 we'll start the actual prayer meeting. My hope is it will be done by 8 a.m. or 5 till so folks can get to work. Um, so, prayer breakfast on the National Day of Prayer, May 6th. All right? I think that's it. And that was the one I forgot to do before I started. Any other announcements? Well, then you know what? I want to pray. Grab your bulletin or watch the screen because when I conclude my part of the prayer, you have some praying to do with me, some responsive prayer. Let's go to the Lord. Our Lord and our God, we just come before you this morning, and we are so very, very grateful that your Holy Spirit is right here with us. We just ask that, uh, Lord, your Holy Spirit be poured out more and more and more of your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us, on those who might be watching our broadcast, on those who are normally here but just can't seem to make it for whatever reason. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. 
Lord, we're delighted to have the opportunity to worship. And worship means it's about you, not about us. Yes, we have our preferences and we have our favorite hymns and all those things, Lord. But worship is about bringing you praise, honor, and glory. And so, Lord, help us settle our hearts and our minds this morning so that we can focus just on you praising you and thanking you and glorifying you. Lord, thank you for being a forgiving God. We confess that we probably haven't loved you the way we should this week, and we haven't loved our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. And yet we know you to be a forgiving God. Thank you for forgiveness. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to be more forgiving ourselves. So many within our biological families, within our church family, our brothers and sisters in Christ that are hurting, Lord. Maybe it's physical issues. We pray for those who are struggling physically. Touch them with Your healing hand. Sometimes it's emotional, Lord. And so we pray for those with anxiety or depression or those who are grieving. Yes, heal them as well. And Lord, be with all of us spiritually. We all are in need of Your spiritual healing each and every day. Sinners such as we are, Lord, we need Your grace new each and every morning. And we know that Your Word says every morning it is renewed. Thank You, God. Thank You for the way You love us. Because You love us, we can love others. And now, join me as we go through our responsive prayer. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Please forgive us for the occasions when we have been the ones to introduce disease into the vine, preferring its contamination to the vigor of health. Have mercy on us. Please do not lose patience or sever us completely from the true vine. morning. Please rise as you are able or rise in spirit and let us join in singing together hymn 75, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
Our Psalter reading from, for today comes to us from Psalm 22, 25 to 31, page 753 in your hymnal. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise the Lord. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down to the Lord. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. Posterity shall serve the Lord. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Surely the Lord has done it. You may be seated. And uh, please join in singing hymn 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Testament reading today comes from John 1, 4, 7 through 21, Living the Resurrection, Abide in Me. Dear friends, let us love one another for God, for love comes from God. 
Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment, because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us the command, whoever loves God, must also love his brother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Carol. Jesus said for me to abide in him. He, Jesus, is the vine. I am a branch. Apart from the vine, a branch can do nothing. I think I've always struggled to understand the scriptures that we just read. They sound easy, but in real life, I'm not sure they are that easy. Oh, I know I love God, and then I read, but if I don't love my brothers and my sisters, then I must not be loving. Not loving like God is loving. And frankly, folks, that concerns me. I don't know about you. Maybe this is going to be another one of those sermons where I'm preaching to me and you're going to get caught in the middle. I don't know. I do love you, folks. I want to love all you folks. But the reality is, in my humanness, I struggle to love everyone the way Jesus loved everyone. Forgive me. But it seems like some folks enjoy being me. And frankly, most of the conflict that goes on within a church are issues about power and control. However, I'm reminded that God loves us all. Even those that are kind of ornery. 
You know any of those folks? See, God loves everyone, the good and the honoring. So I stand needing to repent for my qualified love. Maybe you do too. I don't know. I find myself in a place where sometimes I qualify some folks checking to see if they're worthy of my love based on their behavior. Any of you uh, ever survived teenagers? I can tell you I wish I had a buck for every time I said, I love you, I just don't like you right now. Right? Anyone else? And my mom and dad would have been millionaires, I'm sure. And I wonder if God's that way with me sometimes. Kevin, I love you. I just don't like you very much right now. Hmm. Well, hear me say, I'm sorry for not loving all of you the way Jesus loves us. But I know this, only God can help me be the man He wants me to be. Amen? And that's good news. Because we have a God who wants me to be the man I'm supposed to be, and He wants you to be the man or woman that you're supposed to be. Amen? And God doesn't just say, Woo, what a mess you are. I'm going to be over here now. God is with us. Amen? God is is with us. A pastor once remarked that Lazarus was sick. And when Mary and Martha sent for Jesus, their message was not, Lord, He who loves you. No, the message they sent was, Lord, He whom you love is sick. Did you catch the difference? It wasn't, He who loves you, Lord. It was, You, Lord, who love Him. He's sick. Please come. Right? A subtle difference. But what we need to understand is it's not our imperfect love toward Jesus that comforts us. It's Jesus' perfect love toward us that comforts and heals. That's the real deal. You can think of it this way. A little Spanish boy who became a devout Christian was asked by an English tourist one day what had been the influence that determined his Christian actions. The little boy answered this way. He said, it was all because of the odd sparrow. It was all because of the odd sparrow. And the Englishman was perplexed and said, I do not understand. What odd sparrow? So the little boy went on. Well, Senor, it is this way, the boy said. A gentleman gave me a New Testament to read. I read in one gospel that two sparrows were sold for a farthing. And later in Luke, I saw this question. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? I said to myself, that Nuestro Señor, Nuestro Señor meaning our Lord, Nuestro Señor Jesus Christ knew well our custom of selling birds. As you know, sir, we trap birds. And we get one Chico for two birds. But for two Chicos, we'll throw in three birds more. You get five birds. That extra sparrow is only marketing of no account at all. And now I think to myself that I am so insignificant, so poor, so small, that no one would think of counting 
me. I am like the fifth sparrow of no value. And yet, our marvelous Nuestro Señor says, not one of them is forgotten before God. I have never heard anything like it. Sir, no one but He could ever have thought of not forgetting me. Folks, Jesus was the first person that this little boy felt valued by. Do we really understand how much God loves us? Do you really understand how much God loves you? How much Jesus and the Holy Spirit love you? This week's Scripture tells us that if we truly love God, then we will love others. It seems hard to love everyone the way Jesus loved, but that is clearly what we're called to do. Love others as God loves us. Let's get into our Scripture. You know, statistics aren't everything. But sometimes statistics can be pretty revealing. I mean, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but in 15 verses of reading, the word love or a form of it is mentioned 27 times. I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking about love today. Amen? No need to ask what John was thinking about. As he wrote this letter... 1 John, it was all building toward what we're going to read today as his loving climax, if you will. Well, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. That's how God shows His love. According to N.T. Wright in his commentary, Early Christian Letters for Everyone, the Christian faith grows directly out of and must directly express the belief that in Jesus, the Messiah, the one true God has revealed Himself to be love incarnate. Now, that's an interesting word, that incarnate, right? We know that love incarnate means love in the flesh, right? And so when Christ came down and was born and we celebrated at Christmas, it was God taking on flesh. It was love. God is love. God, love, took on flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. And we sing a hymn, love came down at Christmas, don't we? This means yes. (laughs) We do. Love came down at Christmas. Love incarnate must be the badge that the Christian community wears. The sign not only of who they are, but of who their God is. Verse 10, this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us. And He sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Gosh, that sure sounds easy, doesn't it? Anyone else have trouble making that happen? 
Therefore, if that's how God loved us, we ought to love one another in the same way. God set an example and we should copy it. We should imitate it. We should emulate it. We should grow into it. We should mature into it. God expects us to be more and more like Jesus. We need to be a follower, not a fan of Christ. That was a blatant plug for the book study. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. God abides in us and His love is completed in us. We don't really know who God is until we look at Jesus. See, we talk about Revelation, and for most of us, we hear the word Revelation and we think, oh, it's the last book of the Bible, it's all about prophecy and stuff that, woo, I don't even know if I get it all, right? But Revelation means to reveal, and that's what God has done in the Bible. God has done in the Bible, He tells us who He is. He reveals. It's all a revelation. It's a revealing. And when Christ came, that was another revelation of who God is. Because as we understand who Jesus is, then we also can understand who God truly is. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. God has a desire for us to love as Jesus loved and then love is complete. It's gone full circle. It's completed the cycle. We love because He first loved us. We become more and more like Jesus. We become more loving in the correct way. And love is made complete in us. The same door that opens to let your love of God out is the same door that opens to let your love of your neighbor out. Amen? It's the same door. I like to open it for God. Some days not so much for my neighbors. You should see me in traffic. Whoa. What a mess I am. If you're not doing the latter, you're not doing the former. If you're not loving your neighbor, you're not loving God is what this Scripture says. And that scares me. Does it scare you? Because it says if I don't love my neighbor, I'm not really loving God. And I so, so want to be in love with God. Lord, help me love my neighbor the way I love you. If God revealed Himself in the world by turning His love into flesh and blood, then maybe we should do the same, realizing that we're completing God's love. Verse 13. We know that we live in Him and He in us because He has given us His Spirit. Thank you, God. Verse 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Anybody need a Savior? Whether you know it or not, you need a Savior. We all do. Verse 15, If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him and He in God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is your Savior. Verse 16, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. At the heart of this passage, or these passages, I should say, we find a little word which means like a whole world to John. As in his gospel, it means so much to Jesus himself. 
Those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Did you hear that? Those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. That abide is just a tiny little word. But it means a boatload. It occurs in lots of other places, including this previous verse. But that little word is, man, massive from a definition standpoint. Because that word abide is frequently also used as meaning to dwell. Let's insert that. You who dwell in love dwell in God and God dwells in them. Oh, that fits, don't you think? If you dwell in love, God dwells in you and you dwell in God, right? I mean, it, it all comes together. Abide and dwell. Or we could use another word to describe abide. The word remain. Those who remain in love remain in God. And God remains in them. Anybody want God to remain in you? Yeah. Remain in love. Or there's a third definition we could use. It's to make one's home. To make one's home. So if we insert it, those who make one's home in love make one's home in God. And God makes one's home in them. Again, ding, 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 ding. Winner, winner, winner. So whether we're dwelling or remaining or making our home in love, God will dwell or remain or make His home in us. Isn't that good news? That's gospel in and of itself. Wow. The reality is profound, going to the heart of what Christian faith is all about. The essence of love is not man's loving God, rather it's God's love for man, expressed in the historical sending of the Son as a satisfaction offering for man's sins. Man's love is always and only a response to God's love. That's why it says, we can love because He first loved us. Our love is a response to God's love that He pours out on us. Amen? Okay. Back to the Scripture. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like Him. Here comes another one of those phrases that we hate to hear about. Judgment day. I don't know. But His love is made complete so that we'll have confidence on the day of judgment. Thank you, God. He knew how insecure we are. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like Him. 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Anyone have fears? I do. I'm not made perfect in love yet. How about you? You know, here we go. Life and my spiritual life is like a roller coaster. Man, sometimes I'm at the top and enjoying the view and the next minute, woo look out. Right? Maybe you too. 
Now and on Judgment Day, there's no fear because complete love drives out fear. Fear of punishment and love are incompatible. Sin breeds fear. Fearless love breeds confidence. Verse 19, we love because He first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And He has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And in my humanness, I often say, well, I love them, I just don't like them. Right? Love means, well, love needs to be perfected. Certainly in me. And maybe in you, too. How then could God obtain this love which His righteousness required? He solved that problem by sending His Son to die for us. What a wonderful, awesome love. It draws out our hearts to Him in return. And we end up saying, You have bled and died for Me. From now on, I will live for You. That's what God's love does. We get so grateful that we want to be loving and live. Think about this. Uh, spokes. Most of us have probably ridden a bike at some point in time. And I know I've run probably thousands of dollars of baseball cards on the spokes on my bike. Anyone else? Spokes, as they get nearer to the center of the wheel, they get nearer to one another. And that's how it is for us. The closer we get to God, the closer we'll get to our fellow human beings. The closer we get to God, the more we will love God. The closer we get to others, the more we will love them. So, Take this home. What should we do about this love dilemma? How do we continue to love those who just want ill for us? Those who always seem to do evil things? How do we change the very nature that we seem to be born with? Well, maybe not you, but certainly me. Do we just look the other way? How does God love so well? How does God love so perfectly? A gentleman who was a professed Christian was seriously ill, bedridden. He became troubled about how little he seemed to love God. And he spoke of that experience to a friend. And this is how his friend answered him. He said, when I go home from here, I expect to take my baby on my knee and I'm going to look into her sweet eyes. I'm going to listen to her charming prattle and cooing. And tired as I am, her presence will rest. Will rest me. For I love that child with an unbelievable tenderness even though she seems to love me very little. I mean, if my heart were breaking, it wouldn't disturb her sleep. If my body was racked with pain, it would not interrupt her play. If I were dead, my baby would forget me in a few days. Besides this, she has never brought me a penny, and yet she's cost, she's just a constant expense. Dear friend, I'm not rich, but there's not enough money in the world to purchase my baby. How is that possible? 
Is she in love with me or am I in love with her? Do I withhold my love until I know she loves me? Am I waiting for her to do something worthy of my love before I extend it? The practical illustration of love that God has for His children caused tears to roll down the sick man's cheeks. I see, he exclaimed. It's not my love for God, but God's love for me that I should be thinking of. And I do love Him now as I never loved Him before. You see, he was thinking all about his love for God and forgetting to think about God's love for him. Friends, that's what we need to do as well. Dwell on God's love for you. You should be thinking of God's love for you. Not your love for God. Because if you recognize God's love for you, when you begin to really discern God's infinite love for you, you can't help but become closer and closer to our loving God. And, and, you will love others more and more. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Anyone interested in communion today? Good, me too. Would you open your hymnal to page 12? And looky here, it's on the screen as well. You gotta love technology when it works, huh? If you're following on the hymnal, we'll be in page 12. I'm gonna jump around a little bit. You know how I am, so. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Together, merciful God, we confess we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take just a few moments. Let's pray for those we need to forgive. And let's pray for those who need to forgive us. Amen. 
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the uh, next page, we will go to the Great Thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke that bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, again giving thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on those who may be viewing as well, and on these gifts of bread and wine that we are about to partake of, and any bread or juice that those at home will partake of as well. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in the final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Dennis, would you come up and give me a hand today?
Well, I don't know about you, but that almost felt normal again. Sorry, I forgot my mask. But you know what? I've been vaccinated. Do you ever get the feeling like they're talking about your pup? But he's had his shots. Anyhow, I've had my shots. Love. What's the definition of love when you think about it? It defies physics. You know, it's kind of like the, the basket of fish. The more that is given, the more there is. It's not just a feeling. It's, it's uh, Although we love that feeling, don't we? It's also an act. And we know there's a few things that hinder our love, and that's forgiveness. If we don't forgive, it's hard to love that person, isn't it? So I would ask us all as a church, as the body of Christ, to think about that. We need to forgive each other. We need to love each other. I, w I would... I would love to see this church be used by Christ in a way that finds souls to bring to his feet. So I'll start. Um, please forgive me for any transgressions I've caused any of you. I need that forgiveness. Let's love each other. Let us pray. Lord, pour your Holy Spirit down upon this church, upon all these people. Fill our basket, Lord, our heart and our soul with your love. And teach us, Lord, that the more we give out that love, the more is in our hearts, the more is in our basket. Help us, Lord, to act upon your love and, and becoming active, Lord, in our walk with you. I'm thankful, Lord, that I know who I am without you because then I can appreciate what you've done for me. Use this church. Use these people that you love. Give us ambition, Lord, to tell others about your love for us. Let them see that in us. Thank you for your healing power, Lord, of those who need to be physically healed and emotionally healed. Thank you for 
all the blessings you give us that nobody else can give. Love comes from you. The air we breathe, the earth we walk on, the beauty of the trees in this world. You give us way beyond what we need. So, Lord, in love for you, use us, Lord, to tell others about your love. And I ask this. We ask this, Lord, to put forgiveness in our hearts. Thank you for your promises and your joy and your peace. And the happiness we feel sometimes when we're in the dark and for your light to shine through. May we know this one thing. Never for a second are we alone because you love us and you are always with us and you will never forsake us even until the end of the age. but forever. And we thank you and we praise you and we love you, Lord, in Jesus Christ, holy, holy, precious name. Amen and amen. Recite with me the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able or rise in spirit and sing with me our closing hymn 170, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Oh!
Thank you, God, for loving us first. Amen? Yeah. And now in the name of God the Father and Jesus Christ, His holy and perfect Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, let us leave here with the love of God in our hearts. And let us take that love to the world. Go in peace, go in love. Amen and amen. Thank you.